Well guys, last time we were working on uh, my sister Jenny's uh, slash her husband slash uh, my niece's car. Now the Grand Marquis, which I still got a couple more videos to post on that. And now we're working on the 2013 Kia Optima. We're doing uh, front brakes, air filter, oil change, and maybe look into some other miscellaneous stuff that's going on. First thing I did after getting on jack stands, um, I just checked the uh, tie rod ends and ball joints. Wheel bearings, wiggle the wheel this way, this way, and both sides are nice and tight. And it's got 94,000 miles on it, which is not bad considering my Ford Fusion has almost the same mileage and um, there's a about a five year difference between the two. My car is getting close to getting 100,000 on it and I've, I've only had it for a little less than a year. Let's go ahead and pop the new air filter in. Let's see, this should be pretty easy. Can't be too complicated, can it? Oh, there's a clip there. A clip there. And then our... Oh, oh yeah, so. What, what, what do we got going on here? Can we pull up on this a little bit more? Oh yeah, that one's toast. It's been replaced before. Yeah, it looks like it was replaced exactly with an STP filter. Uh, not quite. And the, the seal's been rolled over a couple times. Someone's been yanking this. Hey, ma'am, you want to change your air filter? I'm gonna make sure the gas gets on there properly. Okay. Clips around all the way. Yeah. Not the best air filter, but it'll do. Okay, surprisingly, we have a nice belly pan design here. Let's see. Okay. We have access hole and access hole here. 17 millimeter on our drain plug here. I might have to use two hands on that one. Oh, look, you can see it. Now we want to go that way. Got my new drain pan I just picked up from the parts store. I had one just like this, and I, uh, I dropped a motor right into it. I did that with my uh, my neighbor's camera. His engine fell off the thing, and luckily it wasn't too far, and it landed on some other stuff. But it, it part of it landed here and poked a hole. Whew! That was not fun. Okay. I did run this for like a second. I didn't go run it down the road or anything. We're just gonna do a spill and fill. Okay. Let's make sure that our seal is still there. Yeah, we gotta. It's that fairly new guy that's on there. That's not what I wanted to do. Get dirt all over it. After I just cleaned it. Although a little shop manual says 32, 30, 32, 25. Let's see, I got that right. It's almost 40. 
It's like 32.5. Yeah, I have that right. 32.5 foot pounds on the drain plug. And we're actually torquing it. Why? Because one, it's the right thing to do. And secondly, we have the technology. I actually felt pretty good. That's how, about how tight I normally put them on anyways. Now you gotta be careful with this one. I would actually recommend wearing gloves because this plastic is kind of sharp and I almost I cut myself on it. So you gotta go kind of slow. Now you could poke a hole in the bottom of that, but um, I'm not gonna do that. So I use the you use the STP setup like I am. It's a 2808. <laughs> Make sure we don't have an old gasket up there. bit of fun here. We're almost done with engine stuff actually. Got some uh let's see I guess five actually I think I looked up yeah I looked it up but before I bought it, it was 520. We got 520 full synthetic we got the super technical product someone's gonna be mad I can't believe you put SDP well this has to be better than what was in there I mean, come on. This funnel's got kind of a narrow mouth on it, so it uh, takes a little bit longer to fill. And then even though we put the drain plug back in, you wanna look underneath and make sure you're not dumping it all over. This is expensive stuff. Not really. We haven't started it yet, but so far we're on the full mark. I'm glad these things take five quarts and not like, oh, we've got a four and a half and three quarters. Yeah, we're gonna be right in between the hatch marks when we start it up. So I did the other side. The other side I had a little uh, little issue. This is this has had some brake work done to it at some point. Because somebody's been in here and kind of chowdered up one of the uh, screws. Still got the two screws in here that hold it on. One on that side had like a slot drilled into it or cut into it. And the other one was a little mushroomy. I could not get a uh, Impact driver set. One, I left mine at home and it's in a million pieces and I don't know where they are. Two, the O'Reilly's that I went to did not have it so I just got a nice uh, driver here and just pounded it in there and I got it to turn a quarter turn and it snapped off so you know those are on there for safety purposes for the factory when they're put together. They are not necessary after you service your brakes because your wheel is what holds them on. And usually most mechanics, or even a DIY, if you uh, have thought about this trick, you just take a lug nut and you can run it back on your stud there and you can hold your rotor on while you mess around with the uh, brake caliper. Anyways, um, the other one that had the slot in it, I could not, I didn't, I don't have a flat, I didn't, I brought basic tools with me because, um, well, let's face it, I forgot all some tools. <laughs> that's, my, that's my excuse. Um, so what I did with the other one is I just hammered on the rotor and it that one just snapped like it was uh, really not even there. So it wasn't too big of a deal. So uh, this is a, what size is this? 
It's a three by six, or a number three Phillips. Six inch. Uh, lug nuts on this are a, the 13 sixteenths? Yeah, 13 sixteenths. The hardware is not necessarily metric. I think it's standard, but I don't have standard because I always use metric. The 17 takes off the big bolts for the caliper bracket. And a 14, although kind of loose, takes off the caliper uh, bolts, mounting screws. Um, and then I got this little guy you can get from uh, O'Reilly's. I think they have these. They have a couple different versions of this. You can use this to squeeze your caliper back in. Or I've even used this because that's what I had. This worked too. You just keep easing on it and it works. Um, the other guy I got, I believe this is my three pounder, three pound sledge. And then we use this. Um, you can even use a wire brush, a regular one. Get out of here, fly. Come on, get. Um, I use this to clean the back side of the wheel off and the face of the rotor. Um, this car was pretty bad um, with that kind of stuff. It's an Idaho rig, and um, I don't know how much it gets driven in the snow, but it's a tad crusty, but not too bad. Not uh, not South Main Auto or Watch West work, you know, Illinois, New York, uh, crusty. Okay, you see how crusty it is? And then back here we need to get all that off um, if you don't mind a little bit of wheel vibration then you can just leave it we got two probably not 14 millimeter bolts or cap screws and then we've got some uh, 17 millimeter almost uh, bolts that hold the bracket on and it looks like we got two screws here that haven't been touched so this has a probably original brakes, really. Yeah, these pads are, are just about smoked. The rear brakes are pretty much there, too. Um, gee, we're going to have to do rear brakes on it uh, oh, pretty soon. I'll probably come back out next spring for a weekend and uh, do the rear brakes on this car. And then I got my uh, sister's uh, Grand Marquis that we worked on last time. It still needs rear brakes. And, some engine stuff so we got some fun Idaho trips coming up now this just has been pretty nice sometimes you can actually do like that pull on it a little bit and it will push that piston in a little bit and you can hang this if you want I've been just leaving it right here and letting it not you know hang off the hose for too long, only short periods of time. Okay, so. We might, uh, we might need a little bit of persuasion here. Get out of there. Yeah, see this is what they're looking like there. Wearing evenly, which is nice. Not tea bag. These pins have been in good shape, but I've been uh, popping them out, wiping them off, and uh, regreasing them. And these were a little crusty. Oh, I should have brought a foam mat with me. Why didn't I do that? Oh yeah. Let's just stop wasting time. You know, it's not too terribly rusty. It's just, you know, whatever. Now this side I was not so lucky. I just can't get a socket in there. Ah, there we go. Oh, this came out pretty easy. The other side just needed to snap. So this is kind of how an impact driver works. You hammer it and it 
It has a mechanism that twists as you hammer, but we're gonna do something similar to that. And we did. Way easier than the other side. Well, since these aren't broken, we'll put these back in. But the other side, if they're broken. Okay. So, I've been having to order brakes online because uh, O'Reilly's in Idaho and Napa, or oh my god, in Idaho and Oregon, as far as I'm concerned, they want $77 a brake rotor for this car. And same thing with our uh, Grand Marquis that we were working on a little bit ago. Um, yeah, it's ridiculous. But we go to Summit Racing and. Uh, yeah, it's like 37 bucks. So for the price of one rotor, basically I got two. That other rotor was not wrapping this bad. I thought that was kind of weird. All right, well, those are off here. are made by standard motor products basically an OEM deal it's very important that that's clean and this rotor fits on there true So the next thing we'll do, we'll take our wire wheel and just burn that crap out. And then we'll take the pins off, wipe them off, lubricate them. And I'm using silicone paste from 3M. This is for brake systems. I've been using that for years now and I have not had problems with it. So that's what I'm using. We're gonna take an old brake pad. Get this guy. Loosen up a little bit. And the important thing about this is to make sure you have room in your brake master cylinder or your brake master reservoir. Because if you do this and you don't have room, you're going to push fluid out of the reservoir. That's an important step. So far we're good. I've already checked it and it looked fine. And this has got a metal piston and the other one was a little crusty on the inside. So hopefully it's clean on the inside because if it wasn't, this will start to bind up as it goes in and that means that there's crap in there. And then you're gonna have to replace your caliper. And you just, if it's not messed up, it'll go and it'll go until it gets real hard. Once it gets real hard, then you're home free. And make sure your boot is not all, you know, goofed up and it needs to be, looks something like what you see there. In there like that. And then, pop her in. There are the premium brakes from uh, Napa and they were, uh, not Napa, but AutoZone, and they're they got this little coating on it, and they're actually kind of nice, and they weren't that expensive. I think it was uh, 25 bucks, or a little less than 30 bucks for the brake pads. The only thing I don't like about these, and what I usually do is I sand the coating off on the metal here, because um, it makes them a little tight sometimes. So let's start at the top. Go. 
just a little snug, but it's loose, loose fit. Loose but snug at the same time. And uh, you can put them in backwards, so make sure you know what order you're going in here. Yeah, can you put that in backwards? I don't think, I don't, it's not, no. It won't let you. No. So I've seen some uh, cars where you can't put them in backwards. There, that has a nice fit there. And now this is squeezed back, we can get this in here like so. Click. I think these need the uh, probably 20 or 30 foot pounds. Good. Click. Okay. Now, last step is before you uh, go to drive the car, pop your brake pedal. Walmart. Okay, so I'm gonna go swap the back left for the front, or swap the back right for the front left. Get the rear tire up here, and then uh, we'll get it on the ground. And we'll break out our half inch torque wrench and we'll torque all the wheels down. 17 inch wheel, uh, we're looking at 85 foot pounds. So let's, let's give her the cut onions here. We're going to star pattern. There we go. Someone's hit some curbs. Runs really good. Likes the oil change. Probably likes the fact that it has new brakes. She clamps pretty good. Let's go take her for a little spin around the neighborhood. I gotta adjust your mirror. Sorry, not sorry. This thing is kind of weird. I'm used to my fusion. Give it a light brake application. Look left and right, make sure there's no people coming. Oh, she's got torque. She's like, oh yeah, fresh air filter. Oh yeah. Give her the beans here, we'll get her up to 40 and then we'll slow down. Okay, this gets up and shit goes, good. And then, And then we, and then we break. Ah, there we go. We're breaking them in. Yeah, this car has got some go. I like it. Okay, I'm gonna let the brakes kind of chill. This is usually how I do brake jobs at the end of the day. Just get on the beans and just ease into the brakes. We got a straight steering wheel, so that's good.
All right, you go. I'm slowing down on purpose so that he has to go. Barely getting into the throttle. This 2.4 has got some power. Hey, let's go take her on that farm over there and do some laps around the track. Now, I'm gonna roll your window up because I can roll mine up too because we got air conditioning. Okay, tubes, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little segment. Um, we may have more work to do on this car. I'll more than likely bring you back and, well, yeah. <laughs> Till next time, see you later. Thanks for watching.